Hello, guys. Welcome to the class today. My name is Bernard Ogabo, but I go with um, the sobriquet of Professor Meritus. Today, we are going to be looking at IS-20 government grants. Um, the government gives grants to people for either a qualifying expenditure or for them to undertake certain kinds of expenditure. For instance, the government can give you a grant because you've invested in a certain class of asset, non-current asset for research, for pharmaceutical development items, or give you a grant like they did in the COVID time to keep people in the payroll. Uh, in the UK, that was called the fall-off scheme. So government grants come in, in two ways. Uh, the revenue grants and the capital grant. And we're going to use uh, the next few minutes to explain how we are supposed to treat government grant if it is a revenue grant or if it is a capital grant. For revenue grant, there are two permissible ways of treating revenue grant. Number one, you can recognize revenue grant as an income in the POL directly or you deduct that income from the related expenses. For instance, if I'm given um, if I'm given a government grant, let's say of a uh, three hundred thousand for one year, and my to keep people in the payroll and my salary, uh, okay, for one month rather, and my salary for that month is. 600,000, whether yearly or monthly is still not a problem. So there are two ways I can do it. Number one, remember this, I said this is government grant and this is my, my monthly wage bill. So this is my government grant for the month and this is my salary for the month. One of the things I can do is I can, I can report government grant as revenue in the POL recognize 600,000 as rental expenses in the same POL, or I recognize rent, uh, sorry, salary expenses as 300,000, which is 600 minus the 300 that have been given as government grant. Either of those ways is permissible. Recognize both the expenses item and the grant as income and expenses, or you deduct the income from the expenses, that is permissible. But when it comes to capital grant, there are two approaches. So approach number one is that I can write off the grant that is given to me against the cost of the asset and depreciate the balance of the asset, or I treat the grant as a deferred income, then recognize small portions of of the grant until you know the 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 time period for which I am depreciating the qualifying assets. So capital grant is related to purchase of asset. Revenue grant is given to you to you know accomplish some lines of expenditure like keep people in the payroll and 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 all you know and. The capital grant should be recognized over the useful life of the expected asset if you are given an asset-related grant. So let's put these um, uh, rules in a technical explanation for now. So illustration one relates to revenue grant. So let's look at what illustration one looks like. It says BCPFC received a government grant of 400000 from the US government on the 1st of April 2020 to keep employees from deprived area in the payroll for the next four years. So technically what I wanted to know is that normally if this grant is for is for is for four years, then the best assumption to do is that it's going to take me hundred thousand per year, you know, to keep staff in the payroll for four years. At the end of year one, there are no redundancies, meaning that this company, ABC PLC, has fulfilled the requirement for keeping staff in the payroll. Assuming at 31st, 
assuming a year a 31st March year end, show the financial statement extract on how the grant should be accounted for at the end of year one. So normally, because this is 400,000 and this grant is to keep people in the payroll for four years and they have made a criteria for year one, we divide this 400,000 by, by four. That means that the grant to be recognized as an income in year one is four is a hundred thousand dollars. Now, if my salaries for this year is five hundred thousand dollars, another time, another way of reporting it is to report the the salaries as four hundred thousand, which would be like five hundred thousand less the hundred thousand that I recognize as grant. But this I, this approach is completely acceptable. So grant released is a hundred thousand. Then, but because I have not fully complied with all the requirements of the grant for the next, I have three years left to keep these people in the payroll before I can enjoy this grant from the government. The portion that I have not fulfilled the obligation, I report it as, as deferred revenue. So if I'm re 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 uh, recognizing as deferred revenue or deferred income, then it means that it become liability. So that will present uh, current and non-current liabilities. So for my non-current liabilities, uh, I have already used up 100,000. So I'm left with 300,000 to use up. And since I'm using 100,000 per year, the, the, out of the 300,000 I have left, 100,000 is due for me to use up for the next 12 months. So that will be a, uh, a current liability. So that is the 100,000 that is here. But the non-current liability is a 200,000 that will be due 24 months from this period onward. So when you see 300,000 minus 100,000, the balance of non-current liability is 200 and current liability is 100. The reason is that 100,000 is due for me to use the next 12 months and the other one, I won't use them until uh, beyond 12 months. Of course, that's why we call it a non-current liabilities. So that is how to look at revenue grant. Very simple, predict the income statement with the portion you're recognizing and any portion left unused should be recognized as deferred income, which is technically and in reality a liability because you are yet to fulfill the requirement of the grant. Illustration two talks about capital grant. Capital grant is given in relation to the asset, to an asset, if you buy a qualifying asset. And we've been told that there are two ways of treating it. It's either you, you net it off from the cost of the asset, then depreciate the balance of the asset over the useful life of the asset, or you treat it, you, you treat it as deferred income. Deferred income means that you recognize just a portion of the grant as the asset is being used. So let's look at this illustration and see how that is implemented. An entity opens a new factory and receives a government grant of 15,000 in respect of a capital equipment costing 100,000. It depreciates asset as 20% on straight line basis. Show how the statement of profit or loss and the statement of financial position will be the first year under both methods. So remember that the cost of the qualifying asset is 100,000, but the grant, a related grant is 15,000. So number one, we're going to use method one that say, take the cost of, take this grant of the cost of the asset and depreciate the balance. Method one, we deduct the grant from the cost of the asset. So what do we do? The cost of the asset is a uh, is 100,000 and the grant is 15. So this is a statement of profit or loss and depreciation expense is 100,000 less 15,000. That gives me 80,000. 20% of 80,000 is, uh, sorry, of uh, 85,000, right now 80,000. 20% of 85,000 is 17,000. Then when I recognize the asset in the statement of financial position, 
remember that I will be told under this method that we take off the grant from the cost to the asset. So what do I do? I said the 100,000 less 15,000, I have 85,000. Then out of the 85,000 depreciation for this first year is 17,000. So I take off 17,000 and the carrying value of the asset is 68,000. This is when I treat this as, uh, uh, when I choose to deduct it from the cost of the asset. What if I choose to recognize deferred, uh, the, the grant given to me as deferred revenue? At deferred revenue, I depreciate the asset at full cost, then take a commensurate depreciation, so to say, of the, of the, of the grant and recognize it as an income. So here you can see that in my statement of profit or loss, what did I do? I simply, uh, let me take it down so that it matches with uh, the method two. So I recognize depreciation base. This is the statement of profit or loss. Depreciation is an expense. It goes to the statement of profit or loss. So I recognize depreciation covering the full cost of the asset. So instead of saying 100 minus 15, I just depreciate the whole asset because I am treating this grant as deferred revenue. Multiply by 100,000, that gives me 20,000. So I recognize income from the grant equivalent to the percentage of the depreciation. So 20% multiplied by the, def, uh, by the government grant gives me the grant to recognize as revenue in my statement of profit or loss. Then when I come to the statement of financial position, don't forget that I have my full cost of asset. So I have 100,000. Then I take away accumulated depreciation and my carrying value is 80,000. However, out of the 15,000, I've already recognized 3,000. So, it means that the value of the grant left that is a deferred revenue is 12,000. And just like we saw on the uh, revenue grant, in this 12,000, since depreciation per year or is, is 20%, it means that I'm also going to recognize grant 20% per year. And they say straight line, so it's not reducing balance method, it's straight line. So I'm going to recognize 3,000 every year. 3,000 is due for me to recognize the next 12 months. And that is why I have a current liability of 3,000, meaning that the next uh, 12 months, uh, this 3,000 is due. So I, I, I treat it as current liabilities. And then uh, 9,000 out of the 12,000 is due for me to take 24 months from today. So that is really how to look at government grant, both uh, revenue uh, uh, grant and capital grant. And under capital grant, we have two methods. Under revenue grant, we have two approaches and either of them are completely accepted by the examiners. I hope this is concise and um, explainable sorry and, and simple for you to to understand don't forget to like the video comment and share most importantly subscribe uh, subscribe to the channel so that if you if there are new videos you can be notified immediately thank you very much